What's up, world? Look, it's your man, Richard Taylor. Welcome to the final episode of Getting Over the Hump. Just for the season, though, don't be scared. I got you. Look, I want you to take this time to go back, look through the first 13 episodes, take what you need for yourself. Chance C. Smith and I are going to be working on some things as well so we can better it. We can make it more awesome than it already is, right? For next year, look, a lot of great things coming up next year. I want to leave you with some great things before I go. Today's episode is a special episode, and it's simply talk about what your motivation is. What is your why? Why do you do what you do? And this episode is actually dedicated to a good friend of mine, Stephen R. A. G. the second. He was murdered uh, around this time last year. Almost done with college, man. Great kid. Had a lot of, lot of potential, a lot of great things that he was going to do in this world. And his life was cut short. So this episode of Getting Over the Hump is dedicated solely to Steve today. We're talking about what's my why, what's your why. A lot of people always ask me about what, why I do what I do. And uh, it's something to think about, but man, this kid was one of the first people that came to my mind. I know I talk about my wife and my family. And I love him dearly, but when I think about people like him, this is it. This is why I do what I do. So I'm going to take you on a little bit of a, of a journey today, and we're going to really break into the nitty-gritty of this. Like I said, it's the final episode. I'm excited. I'm going to miss you, but I'm definitely excited. So look, we're getting over the hump today. Remember what I'm telling you now. What's your why? Why you do what you do? Let's get in tune. And this is the mother of Stephen A.G. Jr., the young man, unfortunately, that was the second. The unfortunate was gunned down the day before Thanksgiving and in DeKalb at Northern Illinois College. He was at a party, correct? When you came in, you said, I don't want my son's life to be in vain, his legacy. I want them to know what his legacy was. Just an outgoing, fun-loving, smiling person. I mean, he, he just loved... Whoever he came across, mm -hmm. the advantaged, the disadvantaged, uh, just a go-getter, not aggressive, but assertive in what he wanted to do. If it was something he wanted to do, there was nothing that could stop him from achieving it. talk about why we do what we do what's your motivation behind what you do as it pertains to your gift your greatness your craft whatever it is you're working towards your job your career I don't care when you are out there doing what you do you need to have uh, the proper motives a lot of times we get people out here in the world that they go out they're trying to create greatness and they're doing it for self they're doing it for their own glorification they're not doing it for other people too many times we get so-called change agents and speakers and singers and actors and, and activists, whomever it might be, about the green, about the money, look, it's more than that today. Like I said, I had to sit back and think. One of my kids actually came up to me, my mentees, and asked me, why? Why do you do what you do? Why is it so important? Why do you sit up here and take your time out to be a servant to, to students that don't care or to people that don't want to do anything with their lives? And I'm like, because they do. They just need attention. And my why, I got my, I got my lovely wife, Ariana. I love you my family, my little brothers, I got people counting on me. But even beyond that, my why is for young black men who might not necessarily get the opportunity to do what I do or to, to, to be able to see what I see because their life is cut short. This is why I do it. And like I said, my boy Steve, I think about him, RIP, to such a young, powerful leader. Um, we had some great times together, got a chance to talk to him, and I, I felt bad. When he passed away, I rem all I could think about was that the six months prior to graduation, before I left that school, he had always said he wanted to get up with me. He wanted to pray. He, he was ready to get, do, do different things with his life. He was like, man, I want to get closer to Christ. I, wanna, you know, I, I just want to go out there and achieve my maximum potential. And we got so caught up in work, and we never got a chance to make it happen. So it got to me for a long time, but I, I, I vowed 
every time I took on the stage, every time I got on one of these, every time I got in front of a big crowd, a small crowd, every time that I said I was going to seize the moment, I had him in mind. So what do I do when I get on that stage? I put my head down, I bow my head, and I take one breath in, and I look up. And when I put my head up, I promise to God, everything I touch is going to be gold. It's going to glitter. And I'm going to not even just wow the crowd. I'm going out there, and I'm changing lives. I'm going to make you laugh. I'm going to make you smile. I'm going to make you cry, whatever it is. But I'm touching the heart because of people like him, because of our young black men and our young black women who are taken away, our young men and women in general whose lives are taken whose opportunities are taken. And this is why it's important. So today, I don't have any one, two, three principles. I'm not giving you any of that today. My only question for you, for you to ponder on, for you to think about is why do you do what you do? What are your motives? What is your motivation? What is your motivation for going out here trying to be a change agent? What is your motivation for going out being an entrepreneur, going out trying to change the world or take over the world? What is your motivation? And when you can actually sit back and think about it, a favorite book of mine says that the love of money is the root of all evil. And guess what? A lot of people, sad to say, we're just going to be real. I don't care. You might think I'm right, wrong, or indifferent. It doesn't matter. A lot of people are out here for the money, the green. And that's their motive behind what they do. But no lives are being changed. Nobody's being touched. Why do you do what you do? What is it that makes you get up earlier than a competition every morning? What is it that makes you get up when you're sick, when you're tired, when you don't feel like it, when you're hungry, when you have no money? What is it that makes you get up and be great? What is it that's pushing you, that's getting you to thrive, to go out there and achieve greatness? Think about it. What's your why? Why do you do what you do? I know mine. I know a lot of people out here, they know theirs already. But some of you all out there that don't necessarily know why, you feel like, man, I'm, I'm out here, but what's my purpose in life? What's my reasoning behind what I'm doing? This is your chance now to sit back, to reflect, to pray, to do whatever you need to do to sit and think, why am I on this journey? Why am I doing this? And look, be honest with yourself. If you feel like your motives are wrong, guess what? Nobody's here to throw stones at you. Nobody's here to, to break you down. Nobody's here to, to talk about you. Get it together, though. Do what you need to do. It's a world of people out here, seven billion people in this entire world. And out of that seven billion, I, I guarantee you at least one million needs you, if not more. But if your motives aren't right, if your heart ain't right and your mind ain't right, you're never reaching the way that you're supposed to. You can have all the glitz and glamour in the world. You can have everything else. But at the end of the day, if you don't have the right heart and you don't have a mind for the people, if you don't have a mind for others around you, if you're not paying it forward, I guarantee you, you're not going to, you're never, you're never going to see full success. You might think of it from a monetary value and say, yeah, I am. But as it relates to the people that you were destined to touch, that you were destined to reach, you will never see success. Once again, it's your boy, Jay Rich, Richard Taylor. Look, Mr. Taylor May, we getting over the hump, baby. This is our last episode. I'm going to miss you all, but like I said, I want you to take this time out, look through the first 13 episodes, see what you need to see out of there, take what you need to take out of there. We about to be back in the lab, and I kid you not, we about to set fire for 2013. So you might not see me anymore after this episode until the new year. Maybe one more. I got a little sneak peek commercial for my book coming out for you. But other than that, no more getting over the humps. Not until 2013, so I want you to take this time now. Remember what I've told you. Appreciate your process. Seize the moment. Create your own change. It's now or never. All of these different titles that we've given you, all of these different concepts that we've given you, you go back and look over them. Think about it for yourself. And your new year doesn't start on January 1st. Your new year is now. It's what you make out of it. And I guarantee you, once you get to that point where you can sit back and you can take all of these different things and add these components to your life, some of these things you might, not, you might know already, you might not know, but it won't mean a thing until you actually use them in your daily life. Apply these different things to your situation, to where you are in life. And like I said, you will see that your new year starts now and it starts with you. You create the change that you want to see. You be the change that you want to see. It's up to you. Why are you doing what you do, though? Once again, so much love. RIP to my brother, Stephen, R-A-G the second. We miss you. We love you to his family. Thank you so much for, for sharing such an awesome young man with us. And, and once again, like I said, look, we always keeping you in our prayers and our thoughts and our mind, and we're going to be getting over the hump together. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for your time. I love you. I'm praying for you. I believe in you. 
you are tailor made in everything that you do. And remember, impossible is nothing. Impossible is nothing. Just words made by men with small minds that can't see themselves doing it, but I guarantee you, you can. Once again, it's your man Richard Taylor. We're getting over the hump, Taylor made.